I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. I'd like to acknowledge this year's NAIDOC theme, because of her, we can. And I'd like to acknowledge all of you. In February last year, I was at a crossroad. Do I start up a micro law firm? Micro meaning me, a laptop, and a phone. Or do I pursue the obvious alternative career path, stand-up comedy? <laughs> the fact that I couldn't even complete the business plan, had no capital, well, I did, but it was all in small change. And had no immediate clients, made my decision an easy one. Stand-up comedy it is. <laughs> my first performance wasn't actually until November last year at the Queensland heat of The Deadly Funny, which is a competition held by the Melbourne International Comedy Festival to provide Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders a pathway into stand-up comedy. The winner of the Queensland Heat would go on to compete at the national finals that happened uh, in the festival, at the festival in April this year. I didn't win the Heat, but I was fortunate enough to secure a wild card. I attended the festival and competed along with 11 other stand-up comedy acts from across the country. To my shock, I was announced the National Deadly Funny winner for 2018. Okay. After I returned from Melbourne, I continued doing stand-up comedy, but mostly at independent open mic stand-up comedy rooms in Brisbane, but also some corporate and community events as well. One night, after I'd finished the set, I was approached by a young lady. Excuse me, Leon, I've come out tonight especially to see you. My ego went, oh my God, my first groupie, cool. <laughs> she continued, you went to QUT, didn't you? Yes, I studied a Bachelor of Laws and did my graduate diploma of legal practice there. I have a Sharpie, where would you like me to sign? <laughs> oh no, thank you. See, I curate the talks at TEDx, at QUT, and I've come to ask whether you'd be interested in doing a talk. Oh wow. Really? What's the topic? We think it would be interesting to find out why you went from law to comedy in order to facilitate important conversations. And that's what I'm here to share with you all today. Why did I go from law to comedy to facilitate important conversations? To answer the question, I needed to unpack it. Why beyond this amazing feeling that I get when I make somebody laugh, did I want to pursue stand-up comedy? You need to understand the inspiration and the reasons why I studied law in the first place in order to answer the question. But before I tell you why I studied law, I need to tell you where I'm from. See, there are two indigenous races in this country, the Melbourne Cup <laughs> and the Sydney to Hobart. But there are also two unique indigenous races of people, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. They are people that were on this continent for 60,000 years before the first fleet, which is really just a nice way of saying first boat people, <laughs> arrived from England 230 years ago. Unfortunately, there wasn't a processing facility at Manus Island at the time. If you converted the 60,000 years into a period of 24 hours, the English have been here for five minutes. And just look at what they've done with the place. I mean, the national debt's the highest it's ever been. Fuel price is ridiculous. And 80% of the recycling bin is going to landfill. That never happened on my indigenous ancestors' watch. Just saying, 60,000 years is a pretty good track record. See, I have ancestry or heritage from both races. In the Torres Strait, I'm from the, I have a lineage from the Ugaramle in the east, and the Italgal and Mualgal in the west. My Aboriginal ancestry 
stems from the Kukumini, Kukialanji, and Girume people of far north Queensland. Now, the reason I look Mexican <laughs> is because mixed in with my indigenous heritage, I have English, Scottish, Welsh, Chinese, Indian, Malayan, Polynesian, and Papua New Guinean. I like to think of myself as the poster boy for multiculturalism and cultural diversity. <laughs> so I was born and raised on TI. TI is an acronym for Thursday Island. Thursday Island is a small island located between Wednesday and Friday Islands <laughs> in the Torres Strait. People always laugh there and say, that's such a silly joke. And I'm always like, <laughs> joke? Eighty percent of the population in the Torres Strait are indigenous. There are four languages spoken there, including English, but it's not the main one. Traditional culture is alive and well in the Torres Strait, and it influences day-to-day -day life. I, therefore, grew up in a remote indigenous community, and I know firsthand that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are proud of their culture and generally proud to be Australians. I now live in Brisbane and are very well accustomed to Western social norms and conventions. But my upbringing and my culture still informs my identity and how I view and behave in the world. For example, Traditionally, in my culture, the men always walked ahead of women and children. Not because they were chauvinistic or rude, but because in old times, if there was an ambush by warriors from another island, those men would be in a position to fight and protect the women and children. Today, in the city, I consider myself a gentleman, and accordingly, I hold the elevator door open for women to walk in first. But I always feel guilty. To be truthful, though, being a gentleman suits me because I couldn't fight my way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> but I can draft an awesome witness statement. <laughs> so that paints a picture of where I'm from. Why, then, did I study law? There are three reasons. One, I wanted to prove that someone from a remote indigenous community like TI could go on to become a lawyer. Two, because of the racial discrimination and social injustice that stemmed from our racist colonial history. And five, <laughs> because maths wasn't a prerequisite. But the main reason was the second one. It hurt me and concerned me that the country that I loved, that I called home, Australia, had a history of cruel and inhumane treatment of my race of people, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. When I grew up, I wanted to be in a position to protect my community. I thought by becoming a lawyer, I would be able to achieve that. At the time, I also had ambitions of joining the circus, I mean, sorry, federal parliament. <laughs> but not anymore. Sorry, what, what was that? If those are my reasons for studying law, then why comedy? That's a great question, very timely. Thank you for asking it. <laughs> As a lawyer, I was militant. Every opportunity I got in relation to discussions around racial discrimination and social injustice. And after many confrontations, I had an epiphany. People appreciate being challenged about Australia's true colonial history, their bigotry and racism in small doses, shrouded in humour. And when they don't know it's happening, 
You know, just like when you give your fur baby its worm tablet hidden in a tree. <laughs> Otherwise, we all know the gagging and struggle that ensures. Take this bitter pill of truth, you little denier. <laughs> or you offer them the tablet and they look at it and dismiss it. Just like the then Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, dismissed the Uluru Statement. Over the years, I've heard so many insensitive and ignorant questions. And I'll give you some examples. Um, I'm not racist, but don't Ab Aboriginal people get university for free? Mate, I hope not, because that means I'm the only black fella paying off for ex debt. <laughs> um, I'm not racist, but uh, Aboriginal people, don't they get free accommodation? Well, actually, in particular, indigenous men, who are 15 times more likely than non-indigenous men to not only get free accommodation, but free meals, and their laundry done too. In jail, I'm not racist, mate, but you're only at the, you're only at the firm because you're black. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, well, you're only at the firm because you're white. I thought that was a great comeback. <laughs> but unfortunately, it was only a thought that I had two years later. <laughs> I'm not racist, but why don't you all just get over the past already? Ah, the ignorant bliss of white privilege. Hmm. I wish I could say that to my landlord. For goodness sake, why do you keep bringing up my rent arrears? Get over it already. After years of these sorts of questions, it got me to thinking, as an indigenous man, if I could choose one superpower, I would choose white privilege. I mean, from what I've seen, some people with that superpower can say, think, and believe whatever they like about people of other races. It doesn't even have to be true. And if somebody challenges them or tries to make them see things from their perspective and have some empathy, they exercise their superpower in a number of ways. They can be dismissive. Meh. Or they say, political correctness has gone mad. Or my favorite, they convene a panel with everybody else with that superpower and discuss how it's an example of reverse racism and it's unfair. Every superpower has a weakness. White privilege is kryptonite. There's only one. Wealthier white privileged people than them. To be fair, Dinkum, we as Australians need to acknowledge and understand the true colonial history of this country, Australia. Warts and all, the destruction, the hurt, and the ongoing intergenerational trauma it has caused Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Because no country can realize its full potential if its history is based on an ignorance of the truth. Comedy has the ability to remove blame while delivering hard truths. Comedy is a powerful platform that can bring people together to educate, to expose stereotypes and make us aware of our respective of our respective privileges and in turn create empathy. Not sympathy, empathy. Empathy for Australia's first people and all that they've had to endure. And if we as Australians demonstrate 
our empathy, then Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders will have a voice in the Constitution, a treaty, and Australia Day held on a date we can all celebrate together in solidarity as one country. Armed with the law degree, a strong and proud culture, and the delivery of comedy, I've shared a story. I've shared my story. Not just in the hope of finding one groupie, <laughs> but in the hope of sharing an insight. Today, we have advanced the conversation. And together, together we have embarked on a journey, on a path to healing. And that is why I went from law to comedy. <laughs>